So hello everybody, this is just an update of some of the things that we were working on at Plus7. This is the QOLS, which is a QGIS plugin. We did a pre-release alpha thing that you can download from GitHub. You go to github.com slash flight7 slash QOLS, just like here at the top. And if you go to code, you could download the zip, but maybe that's a little bit more complicated to do. We have added a pre-release. So if you go to releases and you go to tags, go to the alpha, it tells you that it's incomplete, it's unstable, so it's up to you to install. How to install it using the zip option. You can just go to QGIS plugins, install from zip instead from repository, and then you will need to download this zip file to your computer and that's the one that you're going to be loading. So what you're going to be getting at the end is something like this. So you're going to have this icon, which is still not finalized, you click on it and you're going to be able to select a few things. In this case, I'm going to select the runway layer, which I already have selected, runway. And here I have two runways in, in this layer. So I'm just going to select this one. It always works in a projected coordinate system. So all of your layers need to be in UTM, conformal conical, whatever projection, but it cannot be directly in WGS84. This is just to make things a little bit easier and less complex on the calculations. You can reproject your layers using QGIS or you can just grab them as they are. But if you use directly WGS84, it won't work, okay? So once you have selected your runway and now I need to have my threshold. So let's do this one here. So I need to go to my layer, select my threshold. You need to fill a few parameters. Now, it's not fully automated yet. There are a lot of things that still uh, on the works and that's on the GitHub. You can put on the GitHub, if you go to issues here, you can see what are the current issues open. You can, if you create your account, you can create new ones and you can create a uh, feature request. Uh, if you try the plugin, what didn't work, what, what did work, etc. Or you can email us and tell us what you think. In this case I'm going to do for position approach, but in theory, you can select all of this, but they're not still parameterized in some of them. That's why we're working on the issues. And we put the start elevation, the end elevations. These are the thresholds. So always we're going to draw from the lower threshold to the highest. So 0, 1 to 1, 9, for example. Airdrome reference point, elevation. And these are the typical parameters for this category. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen because we have a start to end thing. I think I need to switch it up so it goes in this direction. So let's calculate. Ah, okay. So it was on the other direction. So I'm just going to remove the layer. But you see, it's, it's pretty easy. It creates the layer. And then we can measure if things are correct. I'm just going to grab my ruler, change this to meters and Cartesian and measure threshold to the start of the surface. So it's 60 meters, so that's fine. And the width from here to here needs to be 280. So that's okay as well. Now, one of the neat things about this is that it also creates the surface in 3D. So if I edit this, it's going to show me what's the surface in 3D. Now, the only thing is that my start elevation here is 25.687 and my end elevation. So I have this switch. Okay, this might end up being changed in the future, but at least for this example, it's not correct. So I'm just going to remove this layer, create again, calculate, and it's going to get now my layer 3D, but with the correct value. So 25.687, it calculates automatically what's going to be that 60 more meters to get here. Then the other sections, they're automatically 3D. One other thing is that everything is created in memory layers. And if you close this um, project and open it up again, you're not going to see your memory layers unless you also have the plugin memory layer saver. So this is an important thing to take into consideration that the memory layer saver plugin is required to use this. So it's a prerequisite. And then afterward, if you want to save it, you can export this and save the feature wherever you want. If you export as KML and export directly with the absolute values, you're going to be able to show it up in Google. Okay, so now we have this approach surface, we can create a conical. So for the conical, I need to select what is the other threshold. So I'm going to select both of them. Parameters are okay. Now the height still on the work. So we're focusing on creating the correct areas. Conical is correct. Let's create the inner horizontal. Well, the conical, there's something missing, right? Because the conical is not 
complete with the inner horizontal so once you create the inner horizontal what you can do is if you select here to avoid overlaps on active layer you can edit this and just cut it paste it on the inner horizontal cut it again and paste it in the conical and now you have the really correct conical so that's something that's still on the work so it's automatically you need to not do it again like this but i think it's pretty okay pretty fast to do it manually what else optical free zone now here we need to focus again and put the correct values okay. so let's see if we've got it right 687 and the elevation is the other runway end and the arp elevation calculate okay so this is correct we're going to get this part here outer horizontal if your airport has this now because i have the threshold selected then i got this part in this case this is only applicable based on your airdrome reference point so i need to select my airdrome reference point and i need to change it here so this is something else that needs to be improved in the overall user interface okay so now we have the outer horizontal so the only one that we're missing from the ones that are on the approach would be the transitional surface so again some room for improvement for sure like start elevation you wouldn't need to write it several times okay but kind of easy to do at the moment so let's see what this does this is on the wrong direction so we need to switch it up here and it tells us that we haven't a, we don't have a runway selected and of course we also need to change it back to the threshold and select the correct track. so now you see that we have created the transitional surface of course this transitional surface is in one direction we will need to do it on the other direction and merge both of them the only thing is that most of the time the runway classification may change from one runway to the other okay so perfect so we have almost everything now we need a takeoff on the other direction so let's see i'm going to have my runway now my departure end of the runway would be this one okay so my start elevation would be this 27.316 let's assume there's no clear way by default is 1800 it takes into consideration turns now if i uncheck it it's going to change to 1200 which is without 15 degrees turn some something that is shown on the annex and if we keep calculate it's going to show us where our takeoff surface is so if we turn everything on we pretty much have the drawing for our obstacle limitation surface on the this direction and the takeoff on the other now if the inner horizontal and the conical are the same on the other side and the width etc we're only needing to do then the approach the takeoff and the transition on the other side in order to get our complete obstacle imitation surface so this is kind of less than 10 minutes to draw the areas there's still no analysis done and applied to this this are a next step but if the areas are not correctly drawn then there's no point in doing the analysis in the first place but i think we're going in the right direction let us know what you think if there's something else that we can improve you can try it out already on the github link you can download there's a zip and we're going to put a link down here on the video